Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our panel, What's Next? Circus in a Post-Pandemic World. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity this afternoon to introduce one of our partners uh, in the making of that panel. And this presentation will be done in French. Uh, le Secrétariat du Québec aux Relations Canadiennes. Alors, le 8 juillet 2020, le Conseil des ministres du gouvernement du Québec a procédé à la nomination de Mme Maude André Lefebvre à titre de chef de poste du Bureau du Québec dans les provinces de l'Atlantique. Madame Lefebvre a cumulé une vaste expérience tant au niveau international qu'en matière de francophonie. Ayant œuvré pendant 15 ans au sein du ministre des Relations internationales de la francophonie, où elle a notamment rempli plusieurs mandats, dans les diverses directions, son parcours riche et diversifié l'a notamment amené à diriger les bureaux du Québec en Chine de 2013 à 2015, avant d'être nommée directrice à la direction Asie-Pacifique, puis directrice à la francophonie internationale. Elle s'active désormais avec son équipe à la création et au développement des liens constructifs et positifs entre le Québec et les quatre provinces atlantiques. Maud André. Merci, Carole. Alors, euh, ben, bonjour tout le monde. Je suis vraiment très, très heureuse d'être ici euh, avec ma collègue de Myriam, qui travaille activement à, à développer les, les relations entre le Québec et les quatre provinces atlantiques, dont euh, Terre-Neuve et Labrador. On est vraiment très heureuse euh, d'être ici pour notre participation au Festival de cirque, un super bel événement. Bravo aux organisateurs. Félicitations aussi d'avoir mené cette barque dans une, dans une situation pas facile, j'imagine, dans un contexte particulier de, de COVID-19. Euh, mais en même temps, euh, je, je salue votre ténacité parce qu'on a tous besoin de divertissement, on a tous besoin de vivre des émotions. Alors, c'est vraiment à propos. Et le panel d'aujourd'hui aussi démontre clairement votre vision, euh, puisqu'on a besoin de réfléchir à, au lendemain de cette pandémie, comment on va se sortir de, de ce truc, comment on va relancer l'industrie culturelle et l'industrie du cirque en ce qui vous concerne. Euh, au plus grand bénéfice euh, des, des artisans du milieu du cirque et, euh, et, des, euh, et du public qui assiste euh, avec bonheur à, à ces présentations. Alors, bravo et, et merci pour votre vision. I'll, uh, I'll switch into English since we have, uh, uh, well, we are an English-speaking province and I guess we have many English-speaking uh, persons here. So, just a quick a word about uh, the Quebec scene that I'm sure you know of, but let me say a quick, quick, quick word about that. So this is the first time I've taken part in the St. John's International Circus Fest, and I am delighted to see all the excitement generated by this colorf colorful uh, acrobatic event. The circus arts have been in, in a state of effervescence in Quebec since the 1980s, when a group of young stilt performers burst onto the scene in, in the Charlevoix region and triggered a creative wave of unsuspected force. Their crazy adventure caused a revolution in the traditional view of a circus. The original troupe became known as the Cirque du Soleil in 1984 and quickly gained prominence for its theatrical approach, its artistic diversity, and its outstanding performances. This Quebec-born enterprise also dramatically, uh, dramatically highlighted the importance of international cooperation and exchange since it sought out talented performance performers from around the world. In the wake of this great cultural enterprise, several other troops emerged. This, they displayed a range of influences and styles and were based in Quebec City, Montreal, and outlying regions. I, I can say like they even had an influence here in, in Newfoundland. Cirque les sept doigts de la main, flip fabrique, la machine de cirque, les foutucours, Cirque Alphonse, to name but a few, now offer ever more daring performances. They have the ability to create innovative shows that entrance thousands of spectators and are presented throughout Canada and abroad. I like to point out that the circus sector is also one of the best examples of diversity as a driving force for innovation, creativity, and inv inventiveness. Quebec circus companies rely on partnerships outside Quebec to recruit new talent, new talent find inspiration, and increase their outreach. This explains how Quebec Circus troops and the striking diversity they represent come to be represented as major events such as the, the one that brings us all today. 
after a 2020 event that because of the pandemic was based on virtual performances only, Circus Fest is back this fall with a rich, diverse and stimulating fourth edition. The Wonderbolt Productions team deserves our thanks and congratulations as it helps create new partnerships for circus artists and workers and brings a unique circus and bring unique uh, circus performances of international caliber to audiences in the Atlantic provinces. The, the Quebec government has provided two forms of support for the St. John's International Circus Fest. First, it has offered a financial assistance under its support program for the Canadian fr Francophonie through intergovernmental cooperation with the government of Newfoundland and Labrador. The program supports cooperation and exchanges in particular in the field of culture in order to create partnerships and, uh, partnerships and establish network uh, linking. Francophones in Quebec and with those in Canada's other provinces and territories. This has enabled Wonderbolt Productions to invite five uh, Quebec circus artists to St. John's to offer bilingual workshops for the general public during Circus Fest. Dur after the festival, they will also give master classes in the circus arts, especially tailored for the Francophone community. The Quebec government has also provided funding on under its Canadian Relations Support Program, established to promote dialogue and the transfer of expertise between uh, civil society in Quebec and in Canada's other provinces and territories. Here, it will support discussions about the future of the circus sector. The Quebec government office in the Atlantic provinces has been active in the region for over 40 years now. It has ov obviously built partnerships with other governments and supported sustainable economic and cultural exchanges. But it has also nurtured a close relationship between Quebecers and the communities in the Atlantic Canada in all their diversity. Based on the shared experiences and memories and bounds of trust and friendship that have stood the test of time and are renewed on an ongoing basis, as we can see with this festival. Bon, en fait, c'est la fin, donc souhaitons, euh, en fait, <rire> fin de mon <monnaie> clown. <rire> donc, eh bien, en fait, souhaitons à, à ce panel et puis à, à tous les gens qui participent, je vous salue, chers panélistes, des discussions riches, fructueuses et porteuses de, de partenariats pour l'avenir. Et encore une fois, bravo aux organisateurs et aux, aux artisans derrière ce festival. Euh, sans vous, on ne vivrait pas là, les quelques jours d'émotion et de bonheur qu'on qu vit ici. Alors, Merci et vous pourrez compter sur nous pour être partenaires pour l'avenir. Merci. Merci, Maud André. Uh, and now I invite all of our panelists to join us on stage. Panelists, please. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this panel is moderated by Stacy Clark, a former gymnast and performer. She's recently became CEO of Circus Talk, uh, following 14 years with Cirque du Soleil, most recently as director of casting. She's also co-founder and creative athletic performance, a consulting service specializing in casting, coaching, and creation. Stacy loves to teach career and act development, yoga and wellness, plus fitness and handstands. She is passionate about cottage life, the great outdoors, travel, and good wine. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Stacy. Hold. <laughs> Is that true? Yes. Okay. Hi, team. Welcome. Okay. It goes without saying, but we're going to say it anyway. Thank you, St. John's International Circus Festival. We are all thrilled to be here. I'm on day four. I've done a lot of walking, all of it uphill. And I think the most exciting thing is just being here together, having these exact exchanges. So a quick housekeeping thing. At the, well, in, during this panel, during what's bound to be a scintillating exchange, we have 
Tanya Gadsby, all the way in Vancouver, who is a visual scribe. So there's a really delightful reveal at the end of this that I am already excited for. So Tanya is going to get to work just as soon as you bring all of your words of wisdom to light. OK, stage right. Here we are, Bruno Gagnon, former acrobat. Flip Fabrique, co-founder, artistic director, dedicated father, ketchup lover, lumberjack in training, Bruno, welcome. <laughs> Nadia Drouin, soccer mom, karateka, former artist, former presenter, en piste, project manager, and circus ally. Welcome, Nadia. Terry Crane, acrobat, aerialist, filmmaker, circus artist, cat herder, ENC grad, artistic director, nature lover, daydreamer. <laughs> Welcome. Marcelo C. Mata, circus artist, artistic coach, musician, chess lover, soccer fan, cook, lover of cats, occasional cameraman, and cyclist. And Joseph Pinzon, creator, producer, casting director, advocate, sometimes performer. Saw a few of these people last night, didn't we? <laughs> Nailed it champion, electric car owner, and ice cream aficionado. <laughs> Welcome. So we're going to just jump right in. And I am directing questions to individuals, but that does not mean that this is exclusive and in any way keeping the rest of you quiet. So you're always invited to pitch in. That's what's going to make this a conversation. And a little ways down the road, we will do the same with all of you and all of you. So if you do have questions and you have more that you want to add to this conversation, please don't be shy. Here we go. I'm looking at you, Bruno. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Just for the record, by the way, if there's like any of this going on, you're looking at six like active or former acrobats, people who are used to moving. So I don't know about you, but this is already a bit like, oh my God, I got to keep shifting and moving. OK. What are some positive outcomes or takeaways from the pandemic? I don't know if everybody knows what Zoom is, right? <laughs> I know that it's everyone gets the zoom it all the time and you can do you know so many meetings but I'm going to just say that very quick this is a very powerful tool that we use now that we can be in Germany for having three meetings every 20 minutes and then do a synos and, and then uh, this is something that we did not do before the pandemic Everyone's doing it, everyone's tired of it, but it, this is gonna stay and I believe it's positive because we cannot all the time be uh, you know, traveling and being presential with people. It's great. I took a plane yesterday. That was great for the first time yeah. in like two years. Um, so, and other than that, what is something positive? I'd have to say that Six Degrees is the show that we have produced, uh, initially social distanced. So I'd have to say that this is very positive. And so we're going to be presenting this show here tomorrow. And uh, yes, I'm very, very happy. Um, and it's, uh, I would have to say that this is the, the, uh, the newborn baby that happened during the pandemic. So this is our pandemic production. But then, oh, now we can, you know, I don't like to say that, but touch each other in circus. It's normal. <laughs> and do some circus. And so um, uh, for now, yeah, I think those two things are the thing that will be um, staying. And other than that, uh, I believe that all the community, uh, the artists, uh, the companies, we were all shook, shaken, very, very badly, especially like a year, like March, April last year. And so we all gathered, and I believe we all got closer to each other. The one that were building and the artists that were uh, strong and that are still strong now, but I mean, everybody that was um, a player in this community uh, were shook, and then we were all together, and with the circus school, and with all the companies and all the directors and all the artists and taking care of our people uh, and trying to give job to the, the artists so that they don't you know, leave. Um, yeah, this brought us really closer, I think, and that's something positive. Uh, it uh, is positive. Well. Yeah. I'm hearing connection. 
and unity. Yeah. And there's a lot of humanity. I can tell you're passionate about it. And we're also excited to see your show. Yay! Tomorrow. Thanks. Well, on my part, I think uh, it gave us time. Oh, yeah. It gave us time to, to reflect, to connect, to reconnect with our essentials. Um, I, I think it also gave us time to, well, for en piste, a, a, a big thing that 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 it that happened because of of the pandemic is that all the program formation switched online, so that and made it available for all the circus community, uh, all across Canada. So that was a big big change. Uh, it it uh, also forced Ampis to develop psychological resources. Uh, mm -hmm. tools, uh, created uh, meaningful conversation, uh, personal conversation, uh, political ones. Um, I think it, 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 it occurred and we, we were able to transform that into something positive and be there for the people. It, I, I felt they that were, I don't want to cut, but they were Ampist and all the team, they were really glue for everyone. Mm -hmm. Glue, I mean, mm -hmm. we say mm -hmm. that in French, c'est la, la colle entre nous tous. Right. So bravo to that. Alpes were really, really strong, and they're still strong. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Well, <laughs> and, and I don't want to take any. <laughs> je veux pas prendre tout le crédit. I've been in Alpes like last March, <laughs> Christine. So I'm I'm not here to take any credit. Christine, Christine is somewhere. She's there, and she did all of that work. And she's the one who was there. So yeah, yeah, the team, all the team, they were there. It's, it's like Ampis became a circus cafe open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, you know, was there for the community, so, yeah. Sorry, US folks. I know you're probably feeling a little jelly right now. Uh, we do have some tremendous resources in this country, and we will get to do some exploration of that and compare and contrast different realities. Anybody else want to dive in before I switch cards? <laughs> oh, I, I see your, your hand moved to the mic there, Joe. Um, Arm wrestle. Yeah, I mean, oh, OK. <laughs> you're, you're on. No, I'm going to lose that for sure. Um, well, yeah, so in the US, definitely a, a little bit of a different story. Um, but there were some positive outcomes for us as well. And um, I should say I'm a little bit nervous. So I'm going to picture you all on a Zoom screen. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's been a while since I was in front of this many people. Um, no, but for us, I mean, I would say it took us a while to kind of kick into high gear, but um, it became really like an existential question. And at that point, it was like, okay, we just have to book something. And we made a project that eventually turned into a film. And I've always been a big, um, I, I love that that medium as well. It really it has all its um, all its own particularities to it. Um, so it was, a, it was actually a really fun opportunity for us to like explore that and see what circus on screen looks like. Um, so, so making things with multiple camera angles and that's, that's really intimate. Um, and it was an opportunity to work with artists who are all in different parts of the world and try and find a thread and how can we all, um, yeah, find a, find a, a connection there um, despite not being in the same place. So. Uh, for me, just learning how to use Final Cut Pro and get really down and dirty with, with film. Um, that sounded a little wrong there, but you know, to, to get into the nitty gritty with it, with, that, was, that was a really uh, fun outcome for me, so. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We're starting positive so we can do the deep dive shortly. <laughs> okay, let's start with Marcelo on this one. Uh, can you provide an example of how COVID forced you to pivot or reimagine what you were doing? I think for me personally, I couldn't see another way of doing my life without circus. Like uh, I traveled the whole world to came here and I was not giving up. So I just had to continue anyway without school, without uh, my family, without my cat, without anything beside me. And actually, uh, I had a ankle injury when the pandemic arrived in March, I remember, last year. And I was, okay, I'm fucked, sorry. Beep. 
<laughs> but I was like, okay, I had to continue this. I had the the chance that a friend of mine gave me a piano, and I, and that saved my life in a way. I, like we were talking before about the the positive sides of the pandemic, and that gave us time to do something else, to to stop the highway or the circuit school, or to stop everything that we were doing for taking our time to breathe and and reimagine, like you say. But I, I don't know. I could I couldn't imagine something else than circus. I, I'm not giving up. You know, I, I, that's it. So. Thank you. Yeah, sure. For the record, circus artists are ridiculously multidisciplinary talented. It is quite outstanding when you start to peel back the layers, just how many other kinds of artistic endeavors circus artists excel at. And I think that actually is the embodiment of circus arts. That's a whole other conversation. So <laughs> Joe, do you want to jump in on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, how did I pivot? Well, I had to examine what direction my life was taking. I started a company, I mean, the show was benched just like every other show. But as a performer, I had to just think, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Maybe it's time to take a step back. That was a tough decision because I defined myself as a performing artist for so long. And so it was like an exploration of who, who even am I anymore. But it was a time where you know, the body can't do what it used to. I mean, like, I performed yesterday. That was scary. That was the first time in two years. It, it was after I even decided to stop performing. <laughs> They're like, can you do this? I'm like, yeah. Um, but A um, little bit of vitamin A this morning. Oh, plus other things. Uh, <laughs> but also, it's that, um, that point in the circus performer's life that just is inevitable. And mine just seemed to make sense. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I stopped being in the circus world, I still continue with my company. I, <laughs> I speak up a lot about many different topics within the industry that have either got, uh, gone unspoken or ignored or just like just back, just back, 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 back. And it's like, thanks. It's, uh, it's not easy to take those kinds of stands because you never know what the repercussions are going to be. Mm -hmm. But I'm not performing anywhere. I have nothing to lose. So it's fine. You can you cannot cast me. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate that. And it's it's actually uh, a whole new leadership approach. It's really giving voice, being the voice to help give a voice. And that's a part of what we're doing here, too. Thank you. Uh, Bruno, how yes. about you? Do you have an example, something sort of specific, nuts and bolts, around the pivot? Um, specific, well, personally, I, I, I made the choice that I would um, leave the stage before the pandemic. And so I was kind of ready. Um, I'm not sure if, Joseph, it's the pandemic that made you go through the other side, or you were kind of ready, and that's the drop that made you go, OK, that's it now. So I, that for this point, um, personal, I was kind of ready. But then the pandemic arrived. So I was like, hey, don't cast me anyway. There's a pandemic. <laughs> um, and as a, and so yeah, I needed to leave that part to uh, focus on um, uh, the, the business, the, the, the community, and all the other aspect of circus. And as for the pivot itself, I would have to say, I don't know what to answer to that. There's so many layers, like you said. Um, it's it's been a it's a long pandemic. I thought I thought you know it would go very fast when it's when it's gonna start. Someone will push a button and then COVID will be gone and everyone's gonna go really fast. No, it's really slow. Um, it's ridiculously slower than I thought. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's. I mean, like I said, I took a plane yesterday. We're all here in person now. There's positive. Uh, there's some uh, light for sure. Uh, I believe that in two years, whatever, and, and um, it doesn't really matter the amount of time because I believe it's going better and better now, and uh, I'm very hopeful. Uh, and again, we're here, and Company Seven Fingers are touring now internationally. Alphonse will also be uh, going internationally. Uh, we're going with uh, Blizzard in France in January, and we haven't toured for a year and a half. So uh, we're very positive that this is going to be uh, slower than I thought or expected, and as everyone, uh, but yeah, it's getting there. 
It's getting there. We took a plane yesterday, yes. <laughs> if I never heard the word pivot again, I'd be better off for it. What I'm hearing from all of you is that it wasn't so much of a pivot as a dig in the heels type of circus community resilience of yes, we need to adapt, but we're just gonna dig in even deeper. Pivot schmivet. All right. <laughs> Terry, are there other sectors that you can think of that either thrived during COVID or adapted in innovative ways, things that we might take inspiration from within the circus arts community? So sectors outside that might influence circus arts. Um, so let's see, I, I think. Apart from Amazon. Apart from Amazon, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, um, Amazon, yeah. I, the, by the way, pivot and unprecedented are the two words that I feel like I, I've probably heard enough for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I guess for me, like, I can only really speak to, to my own experience. Um, for us, it was, it was leaning into film. Um, it was leaning into um, out, outdoor shows. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Help me out here, guys. Who, 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 what, what industries? Do you, I mean, like Netflix? Uh, that that, that, yes. that was my answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, all those Netflix of the world, I yeah. mean, had a big jump. Yeah. And theater in the US did a pretty good job um, because like what I mentioned earlier, they got a lot of self-examination in. A lot of movements were started, uh, especially particularly on Broadway because Broadway is pretty problematic uh, in terms of its production, in terms of its casting, in terms of the stories that are put on stage. It got called out a lot and it was very vocal and very visible. Yeah. Because of that, that kind of trickled down, I think, into other art forms too. Dance was affected, opera was affected, you know, the Me Too movement got a little bit more magnified, uh, like artistic directors were thrown out because of that. And so they, they did the work, mm. you know, they did the work that was a long time coming because things couldn't continue, and they shouldn't because this is like the world has changed completely in the last year. Why would we want to go back to the same thing if it wasn't working well for everyone? It was only working well for some. And if the arts are that equal and equitable, they should do it. And that's what these art forms are trying to do. And I think circus has to do that as well. Is it trying? It's trying. It, it could take better steps, but it's, it's hopefully doing the work um, I would like for not just the same people to keep doing the work all the time. I hope that other people will take a stand and do some examination to make the change that'll be better for the future of circus for everyone, yeah. not just for yeah. Quebec or Australia or France, you know. Yeah, and I, I'm just gonna piggyback on that thought and say too, like I think something that happened with the pandemic is like looking at things that were broken and being like, I don't really want to go back to that. And one of those for me was the like arts presentership model um, that, that I've experienced in the US. My company, Acrobatic Conundrum, like we've we've been going to booking conferences and we've we had an agent for a while and we went through this whole scene and it like f for me it bore very little fruit. And but what has borne fruit is is um, connecting with like really small presenters, self-presenting, connecting with other circus schools to present work. Um, and, and I don't know, for us, it's been more of this kind of slightly punk rock, like DIY garage style of circus. And, and we, that's how we've connected with audiences. So I don't know, it's been a really interesting opportunity to be like, okay, like, yeah, like the, those, those things like did not work for me at all. And I mean, you got two Americans on the panel and we have that perspective <laughs> of a country in this art form that really goes underestimated a lot. Yeah. The US is not, really respected in contemporary circus. I can say that really bluntly because, you know, we've had our struggles. I go to the conferences as well and I get looked over all the time for companies from Quebec and France and Australia. And that doesn't mean that they're not good. Of course they're good, that's what's getting booked. But that doesn't mean that that's all that's out there. And people kind of need to, um, like those uh, preconceived notions that we have of certain cultures, you gotta throw that away. 
because American circus is not bad. <laughs> like, we're quite good. So, um, but you also have to give us the chance. You can't just say, oh, we saw American circus before. Eh, no, we don't want it again. It's like, well, we're not that. Just like all the companies from Quebec are different, so are we. Like, I'm, me and Terry have completely different aesthetics. Absolutely, and yeah. I, I think we, we, we have, um, yeah, so different. Oh my God. No. And ironically, too, like we both went through Montreal, and, I, and you know, I had this feeling coming back to the States, like that I wanted to like import a little bit of like this, this, you know, this intimacy, this like level of, con, you know, contemporary quality. So, it, yeah, anyway, uh, I think we've, we've um, gotten a little bit away from your question, but. Maybe so. Gave you a little leash. Some things That's I, right. I had to get off my, my chest there. What I am hearing, though, is uh, circling back to what Nadia said around space perspective, stepping back, and where I think we can up the ante, if I understand correctly, is, and, and I fully support and believe this too, when we say it, circus, it's all of us. It's all of us. So now we need to continue that momentum, that action that's been taken. What are we learning by having had the time and having had things so upended on us. Yeah. Now we have to action it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Marcelo, what are some of your favorite examples of interesting projects that were developed in response to the pandemic? Well, for sure, this festival. <laughs> like yesterday, we were using a museum and different perspectives from for the audience and it was amazing to be on stage not on a stage you know mm -hmm. I mean and also in the the festival of Montreal the last summer they, they were using like uh, the panneur like I don't know like a window and the people was in the street and the people were inside performing so it was like social distancing mm. And a I little know. bit what Terry referenced, the outdoor show yeah. concept, taking it out of what we know, out of the box. Using what we can do and, you, and in our favor. Like it, it was amazing. And I don't know, also I had the chance to perform in the Quebec City in the street. And it was so nice to go back to, the, to that uh, base of circus. Like in the street is the, the best school. I, uh, yeah. So... I was like, okay, I, I have that freedom again in the street and people just is together and nobody can tell us to uh, go separate each other. No, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I was grateful to be there and, and, and the old Quebec performing as a free artist and people were not like wondering, wearing masks or anything like that. So. It was amazing. We, we had the chance to, to be performing there. And we were not too much artists, so we, were, we had the chance to, for real work. And You're in your element. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you. For sure. I open the floor. What have you seen? What have you done? What have you been inspired by? Work that has emerged as a consequence of the pandemic. Hit me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so I mentioned uh, that we made a couple circus movies. We called them schmovies. <laughs> schmovies, yeah. Because, well, we, we <laughs> there was a lot. It's not cute. Okay, well, that's uh, important feedback. Thank you. No, um, I mean, we, we wanted to really distinguish ourselves from, like, the online show idea because I'm, I'm sure we've all seen it or, or tried it our, ourselves but like like zoom zoom circus is like not fun like it's 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 this, it's this little you know very painful reminder of of uh of the you know how much we miss circus and but um yeah so we we, we called it an you know a movie because it's it's a movie that's also a show and um <laughs> Oh, right? The pen huh? just dropped. Feel free, take it, take it and run, people. Make movies. It's okay, not. Shmollywood, here we come. No. Um, <laughs> you know it's cute. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So that was that was our uh, main pivot, and then we also started performing outdoors, and we like you know begged, borrowed, and stole uh, 
like aerial, um, this a, a very large aerial rig and everything that we would need a trailer, because uh, we've always been like an indoor circus, my company. But this was an opportunity for us to take it outside and. Yeah, I, I liked it. I mean, there's something. Part of the problem in the U.S. too is is liability and and you know hanging from rigs and theaters. It's it's, it's a problem everywhere. Is you you never you're never fully in control of what you're hanging from. So this was a nice opportunity to take it outdoors and and really have that control. And and there's something kind of magical about like being out in the elements too and doing a circus in a parking lot. You know, yeah. we keeping we had it one. Real. Yeah, keeping it real. Little, little rain makes makes it interesting. And, um, we had one garbage truck come by in the middle of, of someone's act, but yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't planned. But um, yeah, so that's that's been some of the some of the ways that we've coped with it, and I think is definitely going to inspire the ways that we rebound from this too. And, and I might infer then that given that you run your own company, that by virtue of doing what you've just described, you inspired others because you did not do that alone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. I mean, they were they were all yeah group group projects, and yeah, it was it was like I said before, it was really an existential thing. It was like I need to talk to other artists. Like I need a reason, you know, <laughs> a reason to get on the phone and talk about art instead of just like I don't know, COVID numbers. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I know that in uh, in Montreal, a lot of uh, the Conseil des Arts de Montréal created a special program during COVID called. Quand l'art prend l'air, mm -hmm. when art gets outside, I don't know. And uh, so a lot of circus companies, I mean, were, uh, were able to, to, to have a grant to be able to go outside and be paid to be there because they were the first reaction of uh, the circus com uh, community in Montreal was, was to go outside and go uh, under balconies of les HLM and, and juggle for those people that were stuck in their in their apartment so when the Conseil des Arts de Montréal realized my god they're taking chances they're taking their time they're not paid let's do something let's and then they put on that program so so that was that was interesting that was good to know that those Conseil des Arts could also pivot and do something to help uh, dancers, uh, singers, you know, all the art form was, was out there, but circus had, had a big opportunity there. Thank you. If I may add to that, of course, the, now I think it's going to be a subject or a topic that we're going to talk later, but of course, the, the help that the government gives and all the programs that there is. So basically, how to pivot, how maybe pivot again. Okay, enough with the pivot. No, uh, enough of the pivot. <laughs> I've planted um, that seed now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the, the whole point was to, you know, create job and, and give options to artists and um, try to find programs and do grants and build projects and, and gather with people and build projects and build a community around those projects and bring people together and then go and then apply. And then, so it's basically what we've been uh, driving through those waves. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, but we, I've seen through... What it's been a, it's the last summer uh, shows in cars shows on pla uh, even Seven Fingers they did the show with the with platforms you buy like a platform and then I believe uh, human beings are very resilient and and circus people I would have to say even more because like uh, Nadia said to go and say okay now what am I gonna do I see an opportunity there's 20 balconies and everyone can go outside they are in their bubble I will go make them smile even though they are having a really day so uh, this is something it's um, you need to be at so much resilience and most people were maybe yesterday they were on a big stage in Cirque du Soleil with 3,000 people and the day after they are there in a parking lot just for those three four mm -hmm. laughs that they have in the balcony for those people so this was a big, a big hit in the face and the back back to you know the street and go back to where we were and why people love circus it's to see them in person and be like oh my god that's so great what you do and so rebuild from gr the ground basically yeah we've seen some cool stuff yeah. that we would have not seen les futuko were going outside with their bubble oh. machine and it was amazing the reaction they had. They were in my street like uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they were live on TV. I said, "What are they live on TV?" And I went outside. 
they're there. Oh my God. So I started running, but it made people so happy. That was amazing. I remember seeing on Facebook, I forget which companies, but they would drive through neighborhoods. I think Alphonse la, did. Uh, Bonheur Babel. Oh, yeah. yeah Bonheur. And they did that. Uh, a big tour in Abitibi. Not a lot of people went and did some shows up in Abitibi, which is north of uh, of Quebec. So they did a really great job for that. Uh, it, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it started with Antoine and Alphonse, mm -hmm. and it has become the yeah. thing. Large now. What it, yeah, it's <laughs> Bonheur Mobile. Sorry, I cut. And like in LA, we did the inverse. We had drive-through shows <laughs> where we would install a show and we'd had a, a route and people would buy tickets and they'd stay. It's like being on It's a Small World, but you stay in your car. <laughs> so you drive through at like one mile per hour, but you get a show. You have performers. Like I cast a, a bunch of acrobats last year for this Christmas show and it was pretty much a circus drive-through show. Wow. But that it's also like such a contrast with the different cultures. Like you guys drove through neighborhoods. We made the cars come to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that drive through I just remember. C'est la parade des jouets, which I did in Quebec. And yes, it was, you do this 15 second block for every single car for hours. I did it once and uh, that's... Yeah, it's, it's rough. It is rough. I but wasn't in gig. it. It's a gig. Yeah. It's a gig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're diving into crystal ball land. And I do have names attached. We sort of tried to, to allocate some of these questions, but there's just five super interesting, diverse perspectives here. So, so have at her. What do you see as the short-term and long-term future of circus as we move forward post-COVID? And I'm a little bit like post-COVID because we all know we're living with it and we are changing and we won't and don't want to go back to how it was. But let's go with the fact that it's going to get better no matter what. It can only go in the better direction. What do we see happening? Um, were you guys at the Naseeb keynote thing yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yeah. 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 And he said some great stuff about like authenticity. Um, and I think that's going to be a lot it's going to be very crucial to the art form. Um, but we also have to be careful with authenticity, because you can be as authentic as you want to be, and sometimes that's not relatable. Um, so having real stories, but stories that are more universal and that resonate, that's going to be important to circus. Because you know, our discipline, our art form, it's like backflips and splits. And yeah, but we all know that already. Like, I can only see a three high so many times in the same show. So what's going to grab me with that three high? We need something that accompanies the discipline, because that's what art is. It's not just the trick. It's what the trick does, how the trick hits someone. We have to remember that if we want this to be an art form, we have to treat it like one and not just like, like, like Showtime, even though Showtime's great, great. But we have to just take the initiative to make things that are more real. I mean, it's funny, because I make like fictional stuff, but it's based <laughs> off of real stuff. <laughs> so. Drop the mic to that. <laughs> We're done here. Uh, you know, a colleague of mine uh, shared this with me back in audition days, and it was an expression that I have regularly put in front of artists in that audition environment, and that is, don't show me your technique, use your technique. It's really the conduit toward the what else. Yes, it's foundational. Yes, we get how awesome you are at that thing that you do. What else? Bring me into it with you. Tell me the story. And seeing like Marcelo yesterday mm -hmm. at the rooms, like phenomenal, but we have to do it for people like him who are still performing and who are coming up and we can't just do it for ourselves anymore. Like, yeah, we got companies, great, we want them to thrive, but who's gonna be in these companies? It's guys like him, it's students coming out of the school, but who gets to be at those schools too? Who gets to be extraordinary? Like outreach and accessibility, like those are terms that I throw around a lot because of advocacy, but it's true. It's like, who gets to go to these schools? Who gets to learn circus? That's going to be the short term and long term of it, yeah. the representation. If we are as diverse as we claim to be, why aren't we seeing it yet? 
are we really that diverse? Well, let's put our money where our mouth is. It's like, let's get different abilities. Let's get different sizes, ages, colors, uh, gender expressions, all of that. That all has to be there because if not, we're just gonna be stuck in the same cycle of seeing the same things that we have for a long time. And that's starting to not resonate anymore. And that's gonna be a problem if we don't change it. Yes, problem. Thank you. So I'm gonna scratch off the long term and we're gonna just go straight to short term because the gauntlet has been dropped. So yes to all of that. And I think we all genuinely believe it. I think in whatever degree we all have passion for exactly what you've expressed. And it brings us back to this very abrupt thing that happened globally that has given us a good kick in the butt. Now it's time to really action it. Put our money where our mouth is. Great message. We're moving on from crystal ball because we want that one to stick. <laughs> so, technologies. What role will new technologies play in circus moving forward? And there's two sides to that. How does that work for us? And how might that cause concern? Even pre-pandemic, I'm the first to say that social media is a challenge. I personally have a love-hate relationship with social media. I've heard a number of you and, and with talks uh, all week long with other people, this is a live art. We want enhancement via technology. We don't want technology to take and strip away that, that live ingredient. So where are you at with that? Technology, yay, nay, fusion, where does it sit? I'll try. Um, I know it's coming. I think every um, producer, circus companies, they will have to, and even, even government, the, the money is basically there for that at this time. So we need to try that as a personal aspect, and as a matter of fact, I also direct, so it's kind of in the way. Um, I am not, um, when I see a backflip, I need to see it, and I don't need to see it through uh, mapping or intelligence artificial or like a 3D thing. I am so not into that. Um, that it's gonna reflect on our productions. But I know some, some, at some point, I'll have to be like, okay, now Bruno, you need to get, get to know what it is and really focus on it because this is where it's going and I believe it is, although I don't wanna. It's the same thing when I, uh, before the pandemic, uh, it's um, Eric from La Toru. Uh, I, I said to him, no, there's no way I'll do a show with social distancing. He said to me, until you have no choice. And I was like, and then six degrees were born. So again, now um, we're not forced to do it kind of in a certain way, but uh, I believe that in the whole um, creative process, uh, technology will be essential. Uh, but I, I, it's not that I want it, I just, I feel it's gonna come. And I believe in, even with Cirque du Soleil, before they were doing a scenography or a set, they were building it with their uh, goggles, uh, right? The thing, so they could see the set, and so I believe that technology will really help creating the creation process. But as, but I'm postponing it, <laughs> kind of. Well, I, uh, what excites me about it is that there's probably, uh, you know, in a few years, going to emerge uh, new trends. Uh, that already exist uh, in Finland, in, in those Nordic countries where new technologies are already really much there in their work. So that, that excites me uh, because some com companies have already engaged in new technologies in their creative process, in their production realities, in their things like that. So that's exciting. It's gonna take a lot of money. That concerns me. I'm concerned that it's only the big companies that are gonna get the money to do those kind of things and not the small companies that have wonderful ideas but don't get that money. And I'm also concerned that artists and companies are gonna want to integrate new technologies in their work, in their shows, but it, that it doesn't come from anything authentic. So it's not 
it's going to be meaningfullessly. Uh, how do you say that? Meaningless. Meaningless. <laughs> then meaningful, and and uh, and that concerns me too because it won't last if it doesn't make sense. So maybe those companies will go places they wouldn't have gone because the grants are there, right. and they're gonna want to do that switch because of the grants. So. So follow the money, but stay authentic. Yeah. <laughs> Try it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know I keep talking about film and movies, but um, <laughs> I think that what's really cool is just how accessible it's become to make film. Like we all speak film, obviously. Like we're so immersed in it. Like we're all doing hybrid already in the sense that we're selling our shows through video. Um, and I, yeah, it's, it's like, and what you could do for like $10 million 10 years ago, you can do for like $1,000 now. Mm -hmm. Like the, the camera, like all, all of the special effects and the equipment, you know, and you can do it with a team of like five people instead of like 50 people. So that, that definitely puts a really powerful tool in, in people's hands. And I don't know, I think, I think certainly like we've all, gained a, an appreciation during the pandemic for live theater. I mean, not us, but, but everyone. Um, and already like before the, you know, before the pandemic, I think in the last 30 years, like uh, ticket, ticket purchasing has gone down like 30%, at least in, in the US. I don't, I don't know if that's the case elsewhere, but um, so I think I, I'm wondering if, there's, if there are ways to kind of weave back and forth between like can a circus company make, you know, movies or or that that can there could there be a movie that that like also be, uh you know complements a show or or is a sequel to a show or or this kind of thing um you touch on a really interesting point and that's reaching people differently through alternate mediums yeah because much as we love live arts and are in fact the embodiment of that is not true necessarily of people on the other side of the screen whatever size or shape that takes so this, for me, is an interesting place where not at the expense of, but maybe in support of. Yeah. It should be a tool. You know, like we do circus. It's very physical. It's very human. The technology should help us do that instead of be making stuff centered around it, because then it's just a robot show, you know? But like I, I could say that like social media has helped a lot, like especially with casting. I can't hold auditions anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I just go on Instagram, and yep. there's my cast. <laughs> and it's also like a good background check, too. Yep. Yeah, so it, it, it's an all-in-one. So thank you, Instagram, so much. It's a powerful tool, it's true. And 30 years ago, 20 years ago, even with Saleh, how do you cast? Do you send a VHS? No, it's not like this. If I receive Hello. a VHS, Some I'll be us. funny. Do come from that era, thank yeah. you. <laughs> but without stuff like what we have now, we wouldn't be able to find amazing artists in the smallest regions yep. who are doing amazing things and who don't have the ability to fly somewhere. And like, I remember casting someone just off of Google and I found her, I'm like, all right, let's take a chance on her. And she was like the star. She stood out and I'm like, thank God. And you know, from doing my show, other people saw her and she got booked. And I'm like, she has a career now. Boom. Thank you, Instagram. Huh? Well, I mean, it also is just doing the work. You know, it's there. We have to use the tools. The tools are there, so. Exactly right. It's a doorway. OK, we are uh, starting to get toward the end, but you're, you're just bringing too much good stuff, so I'm completely ignoring the timer in front of me. <laughs> uh, we're going to go a little bit more personal. And uh, here, I would invite you to share how the circus community has contributed to you professionally or personally in terms of its role, the vitality, the security, the support, name it. But what role did the community play for you during what is arguably an unprecedented, that's for you, Terry, uh, unprecedented period something we never dreamt could happen. Let's face it, it sucked. Are we all in agreement? It, OK, so we're over that now. What did the community do for you? 
so I'll name someone to get started. <laughs> Let's start with Marcelo. Well, like you say, yeah, it sucked at the beginning. We were all in a bad position and a bad situation. Like, I cannot avoid thinking about that beginning. I, I don't know, personally, I was, like I said, I was alone to the other side of the world. Uh, honestly, I don't want to be l uh, annoying, but I, I felt in depression. But I, the community helped me to go up again. And through thank you team for uh, and the school to to give us tools to, to I don't know search a psychologist or just I don't know send us always emails tell tell us how oh, you were with we are with you guys we are not leaving you there in the in the dark. So yeah, the community helped me personally and professionally. They were also always, I don't know, giving, giving any, all the time there for us, you know? I, they never let us down. So thank you, team, for, for, for being there. And the school and the, the whole community in Quebec, we, are, we were so lucky to, to have a flip or seven fingers or so late that they were, always there like you are not giving up so i'm not giving up so it's like a teamwork and keep me that's why i didn't give up that's why i didn't uh, i don't know i don't want to say that word but uh, okay you know i wasn't in depression so life is good now so thank you that's it thank you for sharing Yeah. Anyone else want to share what role the community played? The, it's uh, touched me. Thank you. That was great. I, I feel, um, you know, the giving up part. And so I felt that the, the, communi the community made me feel like I was there for them, and then they were there for me because I was there for them. And so I felt I had the role to play in having to find any type of job I could find to give as many jobs as I can to as many people. And so by doing this, the community made me play a role that made me feel useful and uh, having a, a meaningful life kind of to give people job and to uh, make, uh, you know, uh, j just let's say those, those artists that are there tomorrow on stage, uh, they've been through creation and they will hit a hundred show uh, in, in December through the whole pandemic. So those six people, they are, I, we did that for them and they did that for us kind of. So the team thing, uh, as for me, made this whole pandemic uh, uh, kind of, I had a duty to do. And so, and people when they are saying, oh, it's tough, huh? or you're on PC and you don't do anything. I was like, hey man, no. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you. I think it helped us realize that we are a community. Yeah. We take it for granted a lot because we kind of see circus as just an industry we work in to make money, to make a living. And it helped us to realize we're more than that. Like what On Peace was able to accomplish was phenomenal. Like even though in the States we didn't get it, I, I kept getting the emails. And I'm like, oh, I wish we had that. But <laughs> to see you guys get it, it was just like, wow, they did the work. And it wasn't just for them, it was for everyone. Yeah. Um, in the States, like I was part of the building of the American Circus Alliance because we kind of, <laughs> we had to realize that we ourselves were a community. Even though we're also separate, we had to come together to start pulling resources and use each other as a network, which we never had before. Um, but it was that reliance on each other and knowing that circus is what brings us together. Even though we were so separate, that's what we had in common. We do take it for granted a lot, and I hope that we don't after this because we're so small and we in order for us to grow we we do need each other even if we are in different countries and all the governments work differently we still have the capacity to help each other out and i hope that never goes away thank you this is uh, a good moment to invite you to think of your very own questions i'm going to lob one more out and i'll also invite in anything that might have happened online that will be uh, escorted my way through some form of magic technology. So 
invitation is extended. If you do have anything, start to formulate what your question might be. And our final question, uh, again, sort of for all of you, is going back to what we started with, with Zoom. COVID forced us online and removed many geographical barriers when it comes to work. Will this trend remain? And if so, what does it mean for the future of circus? I hope it means a lot of new national, international projects, exchanges, mm -hmm. conversations, uh, transfer de connaissances, partage de savoir. I mean, I, I hope it means that. I hope it means that we, we, we will remember that we're stronger together, that we need each other to make things happen. I hope we won't forget too fast. Please. Quebec, je me souviens, là. please <laughs> remember. <laughs> I, that's what I hope. Yeah, uh, hopefully it will mean that we can have choices about when we travel and, you know, contribute to climate change and mm -hmm. be, be, just be selective about, you know, you know how we gather and, and, yeah, can we use Zoom? Um, be more focused about the times that, that we do, that we are all in the room together. And, yeah, hybridize. <laughs> Thank you. Zoom's not a default anymore, which is great. Yeah. Sorry, default? Default. 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 Right. Right. It's like it's a tool, just like everything else yeah. now. It's not the only thing we have to do, so <laughs> yay. Yeah. Yeah. And hybrid festivals are there to stay, so yeah. get used to it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there's a hand up in the back. Hi. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Eyes on you. Go for it. Uh, for anyone, uh, what's been one of your favorite interdisciplinary connections with circus and, say, another art form uh, online or in person uh, during the uh, last few years of pandemic? So I'll repeat that if I can. Please keep your questions short. Oh my God. Um, just kidding. That was a fantastic question. I just, I'm really concentrating. So I'm repeating for the camera. Um, your favorite interdisciplinary show, body of work, experience. I think interdisciplinary being key, correct? Yeah. I mean, during the pandemic, so many companies put shows online. Um, that weren't created for virtual audiences. They were just their shows that were filmed, but for the very first time, they were made accessible. Like I remember, um, I forget which company in England, uh, in Europe, but uh, Daniele Finzi Pasca did uh, 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 Einstein on the Beach, and you know I, I worked with him before, and I love how how he does his stuff, and so to be able to see it. I was like, oh my God, he did something really cool with, with, um, with opera, and then he used my friends. And you know, the, being able to see that, I know I wasn't going to be able to fly there um, because it wasn't going to go back up again. So knowing how other disciplines just start integrating circus into their work more and more, it's like we're not the outliers. I mean, we, we are, but you know, it's changing. It so, is changing. Yeah. That's actually my personal aspiration. How can we? really become more genuinely integrated into the broader performing arts. And we are seeing it. That trend is absolutely there. Everybody needs to play together in the sandbox. And I think some extraordinary things will emerge. What's yours? What's your favorite?
Amazing. So visual arts were being described, visual arts and scenic arts and uh, more innovative ways of bringing <coughs> backdrops to life. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Question. Uh, oh, I'm going to come back here and here, and now I'm going to do this. Oh, my God. Thanks for making the text gigantic. Uh, Marie in Ottawa asks, during the pandemic, the world looked to the arts for distraction through TV, movies, digital offerings. Post-pandemic, what can those of us not in the arts and circus worlds do next? And then in parentheses, after buying tickets, of course. <laughs> yes, please, do that first. And then uh, what else? What else can fans do? Yeah, buy tickets, yeah. Just buy more tickets. No, but yeah, talk about it and talk to your friends how art is important and how it's great and how a, a one-hour show can change your life. And that's as a production company, uh, whatever, manager, uh, that's important. When you go see a show, you need to have your life a little change. So once you're done with that, uh, spread the word and yeah, enjoy. We're there for you, so yeah, and buy tickets. We're keeping that one simple because there's really only one task. We want you to remember it, buy tickets. And then buy more tickets and then tell all your friends to buy tickets. Uh, yes? Uh, my question is, uh, is really mainly for performing artists. Like, uh, uh, I, I'm really wondering, I want to know more. Uh, I work for the Ecole de Cirque de Quebec and I want to know more about your plans and your wishes for the next few years. So maybe Marcello first, but I want to hear the performing artists. So, We're going to direct this question to Marcelo, who is uh, surely looking at a different future than he might have otherwise a couple years ago. So the question is, very aptly, what next? <laughs> yeah, well, I love Quebec. <laughs> J'aime Quebec, tabarouette, désolé. Uh, I want to live here in Canada. I think there's way more future for me here and in this country than in Latin America. Things there are way more difficult and there's not this teamwork as powerful as here, mm -hmm. which is a little sad, but there's still, they're working for it, they're still growing. But yeah, I wanna make my career here, I wanna have my family here, I wanna maybe have a little land, I don't know, some in the future, but uh, yeah, I love I love Canada. I love. I don't know. I don't want to say this, but I I love my family. But I uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to make my life. I have, I have to live for what I do, and here is the place, and Quebec is the place, mm -hmm. and yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know Marcelo as well, it goes without saying that means being an artist because that is in your DNA. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my question comes from something that Terry said, but I'm opening it to anyone. Um, you mentioned last year have partly been about finding and making connections without being in the same place. What I'm wondering is for all of you that did those new connections, how different do these or similar new connections feel or felt as opposed to what we met in the flesh? So the question is around how does it feel to connect at a distance using technological support versus live and in the flesh? I, be I believe there's no small talk when you do Zooms. You know what I mean? So that's different. When you see someone, you hug him and you say, hey, hi, how's your, how's your mother? How's your, see? So, and this is gone on Zoom. And so it's more professional. The connection is 99% professional and how are you? And then someone pops up and then, the, okay, we're going to do the ordre du jour right now. So I believe that uh, it's, one is way more professional and the other one, when you're in, with the flesh, then you talk and then it's, this part is, the Latin part is missing. <laughs> 
you, you see, I, I worked for an organization that was an office before, and I, we had a project, and we we had a project with five partners, and we made it like uh, a big thing that every meeting would start by "How are you? Right. What's going on? Take as long as you can, as you can. You know, here's the baton de parole, and go with it." And you know, meetings after meetings, it got shorter, but because we knew where people were at each time, but we made it, you know, very important to do that. But, it, I mean, you have to take the time to do it right. and, and, and commit to it. Yeah, that's a, a really terrific leadership technique, actually. Uh, fully endorsed. Just ask the question. I feel personally that you have to ramp up your curiosity because you're right. Otherwise, you take a straight line to what's on the agenda and what you've got to accomplish. So it's, I don't know, if, if I were to answer your question, it's exactly what a festival like this at this moment in time is doing for all of us, which is reminding us that we are meant to connect as humans. And yes, all the tools are there for us to do things differently and, and even really, really well, but it's not at all the same. And just being able to do this or given a legal hug or whatever it is that we are or not supposed to be able to do in the same shared space. This is, this is humanity. This is who we are. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Everything else is a, a version that we just have to put up with for a while. It's a placeholder, it feels like, for me. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. OK, I'm going to jump into a, another question from a viewer in Montreal. And I do see a hand waving. Yeah, OK. I'll come back, thanks. Uh, hang on, I'm going to do the Montreal question, and then I'm going to look over at you that way. Uh, OK, this is a challenge, and I probably am going to get slapped because we don't really have time, but it's an awesome prospect. I'd love to hear a brainstorm of something specific that each of the panelists would like to see from Circus in five years' time. So here's what we're going to do. It's actually, I'm going to steal a little bit from yesterday's panel when all of the panelists were asked about a parting wish. So give some thought to that, and I'd like you to name it. Don't go into a ton of detail. We don't, unfortunately, have time for a brainstorm, but I would like to have some nutshell version of your circus in five years. Start thinking, and I'll look over here. Yes. So I will do my best to paraphrase that. We have an individual, a performing artist, who, as a visible minority, regularly is made to feel tokenized and would like to ask the question of, and I think I'm hearing essentially inclusiveness, what can companies do to be more inclusive? And what can this individual, as an artist, do to be seen? Um, companies can take the initiative to actually value the person instead of just what they do, who they are. Because there's so much richness to a culture that comes with a performer that companies don't realize is an asset instead of a hindrance. Uh, a lot of times it's like, oh, you're, you might be too dark or you're not the same skin tone, which has happened to me. I mean, like I've, I've spoken on enough panels where I've told my experiences in the industry and they're not all the best. But you know, you also have to take the power in your own hands and have your own agency to make yourself more visible by promoting those things within yourself. Mm -hmm. They're your strengths. Like I can offer something that no one else can. Uh, and I play that up because that's my bread and butter. You know, like I have been in shows where I have been tokenized and that has been, I don't want to say exploited, but it was put out there in a way that I necessarily did not want to do. But I took the power back by owning it and twisting it in a way that I felt comfortable doing. Um, don't forget who you are and let other people know who you are. Like we are, we stand out 
So make yourself stand out more because you have to. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, we have, it's an advantage, if anything. So put that out there more and others will appreciate it if you appreciate it within yourself too. So. Joseph is smart. I'm also old. <laughs> doesn't look like it. But it's been around for a while. It's been through a lot. So I'm going to volunteer Joe's time for a coffee talk because I do think that this is how we take action, is that we talk about it. Thank you for your question. Anything else in the room? I have one more down here, and then you're going to part with your five-year plan. OK, from a virtual viewer, geographic location unknown. Hey, panelists, blue sky question. We love that. Look, we have it. Who do you want to see doing circus in the future who isn't currently in the performing landscape? My daughter. <laughs> um, circus parents. I, f I feel like is uh, is kind of a underrepresented group as well as yeah like mm. I um, women in general actually in 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 especially in certain certain communities um, in my company I'm usually I'm often the only white guy on stage and that's like that's definitely a trend that I would like to continue um, yeah and seeing see, like. Oftentimes, it's a decision between like having a having a kid and having a career. Um, so that's that's something that I would like to to change. Yeah, <laughs> I would say different abilities. Uh, people with uh, accessibility uh, concerns, I think they are just as valid and worthy of having access to training. That's extraordinary. And they can, like I said earlier, probably do things that a lot of us can't because they've overcome so much already and they can use that to their advantage. I'd love to see more abilities on stage. I'd also like to see more women leading companies, mm. uh, producers, women, technical director, women. Uh, yeah, hear them, them, their voice more. Anything to add? You can vote for yourself, by the way. <laughs> yeah, please. More, more of you. <laughs> more of you. Uh, we were in a, next to you yesterday with the drag queen. I like, I just love her. And I would like to see more of these people around. And uh, like we were talking about color, like take Latina, let Latino people, like we're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or African or Asia or whatever yes. you come yes. from, uh, like no, nothing against white people, you know. Like, <laughs> but we, we, there's way more than that, and and we we give you guys something different with our culture, with our way to be. And yeah. I don't know. That's it. Thank you. Are you ready? We're starting on stage right with Bruno, I'm and I would like for you to come um, back to five years. Of course, the whole there's a transition that needs to happen, and I take I know I take part in it because I do uh, uh, direct a company, and so to bring all those things that you brought on the table, and when we produce shows, to bring all that assets to the table in order to do produ productions. This is something that we're actually doing at the moment, and uh, a, a big trend of our show is starting at the moment. But with that said, uh, what if? 10 companies produce one show. That could be something that I would love to. It would be difficult. We would scream at each other. We would not work. It would not be easy. But I believe if we go and we take uh, 10, maybe not 10, but you know, five. <laughs> Let's take five companies and really put our, our minds to it and put our essences, our essence artistic, and build a show. Why not? And this, I think, is a dream because I doubt it would ever happen because for so many reasons, but this I would love to see and be part of, yeah. Thank you. Taking applications over here on stage, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to see more schools, oh, yeah. circus schools around the country, 
uh, more uh, more of program formation for professionals. Uh, we'd like to see uh, a dissemination of circus across the country, not only in small spots, uh, more festivals uh, happening, occurring in circus. Uh, I dream of having to, you know, move every month to one place to another <laughs> to go see festivals because it's happening and that those circus schools are really being helped to to provide all those artists that uh, that we want to see on the stage, the diversity of artists that we want to see on the stage. That's that's it. Thank you. So is the question what, what we want to see or or where we think we will be? You are welcome to answer that in okay. whatever <laughs> <laughs> Dream, dream. <laughs> you, said you, 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 you said you were a dreaming guy. Uh, oh my gosh, I was daydreaming when you said the question. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, no, no. Um, no, for me, I think um, I would be really interested in seeing uh, like a very immersive show, uh, like a Meow Wolf meets Circus kind of thing. Whoa, am I getting feedback? Check, check. <laughs> I got really buzzing there. Um, Queen of the Night was like mm. one of my all-time favorite shows, and um, I, I, I want I want to go to that show. Um, I don't know that that's yeah something that I want to produce, but I want that to exist. Um, I think for me, like my company, I you know I had really had this vision that I was gonna like exit school in Montreal and form a company, and then we would be like the seven fingers in the U.S. You know, mm -hmm. and what's and and have this kind of um, extraordinariness and really being known, and but what, and that hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah. But what has? Yeah. I'm, I'm not holding out. Um, what has happened is that we've really like served an audience, in, and it's been um, somewhat in like big cities, but it's also been in like smaller cities, and bringing like contemporary circus to people who have like never seen the like of it. You know, like, mm. yeah, it's that's that's been a joy for me, and that's something that, yeah, I think I think that's where where we're we're headed, and doing that more consistently, and the better, you know. Thank you. Production machine, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, as she was saying about the social circus and school, I would love to see more of that. Like, uh, thanks to social circus that I'm here that. Cirque du Soleil went to Chile and and they show me wow okay I mean I'm falling in love uh, and this is really helping people over there kids that are, they are in a really bad neighborhood and they just see to they went to a little circus school and they just get out of the street get out of the drugs get out of the mm. bad situation get out of the bad houses bad families well. You know, there's so many problems uh, over there. So I would love to see more uh, schools, like programs at school. Like here, we here we we get the the circus school. They they go to kids. They go to school and they go to the circus school. We don't have that over there. That like I was like, what? <laughs> they have this here. This is like a dream. Like a, so I would love to see this powerful movement in Quebec or Canada or maybe in France as well. In Latin America, like I would love to see this, that, that make people believe that it's possible to to work with circus instead of just traveling here and doing it here. I would love to see it there. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> no, per personally, I have a company, so <laughs> I want that to like get back up and running, get the second show up and running. Uh, it's Short Round Productions is the name of my company. Hire us. Um, but yeah, the second show I want to get up, but also, I know, right? <laughs> um, but I want to see more shows that represent what the world's really like. And I think that's going to put circus more on the radar of the general public when it's more relatable, when it's more accessible, when it looks like what the world is, and when it covers topics that are out there. And it's not easy to tackle that with some splits and a backflip, back but that's our job to figure out. And so once that's out there, it's just going to be better. Well, thank you and all of you. I am going to put my casting hat on and say that I 
seek a level playing field and I aspire to do that and co to contribute to that and then I'll switch hats really quickly and put my circus talk hat on um, and invite all of you into the platform that is very much there to do so much of what you are bringing forth through this conversation for you, with you. I think we are, as it's been mentioned a whole lot over the last few days, stronger together. And that's hashtag COVID gift. <laughs> We've learned that. Thank you, uh, people far away, tuning in, listening, sending questions, paying attention, engaging, actioning. And thanks so much to all of you. Yes. And thank you, St. John's International. Thank Center. you, St. John. Yes. <laughs> Here is the cherry on our Sunday. Watch your heads. We have a super reveal about to happen. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Technology. Yeah. This is new technology. So, Tanya Gadsby in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, and the, oh, there she is. Can we? Excellent. Can everybody? Can you hear me? Yeah. And Perfect. Go. Okay, so this is our beautiful summary of what you shared. I don't capture every last detail. I kind of sum it up into big themes. But we had some beautiful conversations that started around community and how that pandemic created a space virtually uh, for us to take time to think but also to bring us together and innovate. And that connection was really key around the world, uh, internationally, and the conversation around transforming our industries, not only in circus, but Broadway, uh, reckoning with a lot of things that were not good and that we want to change going forward, um, and that we cannot continue to do the same things we've always done. And that's a very key theme across this entire talk as well. Um, this beauty piece around openness to explore and adapt, that's just core to circus artists. You're all very um, uh, multi-talented. And so it was interesting to see some of the new projects that emerged from the pandemic. Things like uh, cars and drive-through circus, I mean, had never really been done before in this way. This big piece around diversity and inclusion, and that we want to see more of that. We want to see people who are different abilities, gender identities, uh, backgrounds, ethnicities, worldviews, cultures in circus, and that makes us stronger. And this leads to more authentic storytelling. And at the heart of it, recognizing that circus, just like any art, can change your life through powerful, authentic narrative. Now, that was a very beautiful point. Uh, we want to continue our global connections and sharing. And this leads to our hope for the next five years around more collaborations, more diversity, more access to schools, and more authentic stories, and of course, more festivals. Uh, thank you for that beautiful panel. Huge thanks. And break. <laughs> I'd like to invite you all back at 3 o'clock for our uh, social 3 circus, uh, 3.30 for a social circus outreach panel, which is going to deal with a lot of what we talk about here. The future is there uh, in a lot of ways. So please come back at 3.30. And there's also <laughs>